It feels good to be bad. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie villains we couldn't help but root for. Oh, come on! You gotta admit this is cool! Just like a movie! Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll only be looking at clear-cut villains, so anti-heroes such as Tony Montana won't be considered. Since we'll be talking about the fate of these villains, a spoiler alert is in order. I am Dracula. Number 10. Khan Noonien Singh, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. And tell me where I may find James Kirk. While Khan's first on-screen appearance was in the 22nd episode of Star Trek The Original Series, he wouldn't truly gain iconic evildoer status until after the release of Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, where he pushed the USS Enterprise crew to their limits. I tried to obey, but kill him. And who can blame Khan for going after Kirk and crew? The starship captain did exile him to a random planet and is arguably responsible for his wife's death. Wouldn't you go after the guy who did that? That, plus his imposing physical stature and immense intellect make him one hell of an opponent. Such a worthy adversary, in fact, that Khan returned yet again in the 2013 film Star Trek Into Darkness. Shall I destroy you, Mr. Spock? Or will you give me what I want? Number 9. Vincent. Collateral. Here's 300 down. What's your name? Max. Max. I'm Vincent. It's a shame Tom Cruise doesn't take on more roles like this one. In Collateral, Cruise plays Vincent, a contract killer who forces a Los Angeles cab driver to ferry him around as he eliminates people with ties to an ongoing trial. You killed him? No, I shot him. Bullets in the fall killed him. Vincent is the kind of bad guy you'd want to have a beer with, assuming you aren't on his hit list. Cruise gives one of his best performances, bringing to life a character that is equal parts charming fair and deadly killer. As the film hurdles to its thrilling conclusion, it's easy to forget that Vincent isn't the one you're supposed to be rooting for. It was an accident. I'm not liable. Bullshit, hey, I'm making you liable. It's coming out of your goddamn pocket. You tell me to take this cab up, it's fat ass. King to that is my boss. Number 8. Brigadier General Francis X, Frank Hummel, The Rock. The tree of Liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. The best villains are the ones with nothing to lose. After a rogue general takes over Alcatraz and threatens to drop nerve gas on the city of San Francisco, it's up to an FBI chemist and a former British spy with a unique knowledge of the island to stop him. What makes us really understand Hummel is the fact that he's doing a bad thing for all the right reasons. All he wants is for the government to compensate the families of the soldiers who died under his command. These men died for their country and they weren't even given a goddamn military burial. The situation is unacceptable. He's smart, capable, and fiercely loyal to his men. Sure, he's a little crazy, but who isn't? This is Brigadier General Francis X. Hummel, United States Marine Corps from Alcatraz. Out. Number 7. Oren Ishii, Kill Bill, Volume 1. Now, if any of you sons of bitches got anything else to say, now's the f***ing time! As head of the Tokyo Yakuza, Oren rules with an iron fist, lopping off the heads of anyone who dares to question her authority. She has a badass army of bodyguards known as the Crazy 88 at her beck and call, though she's plenty capable of taking care of would-be killers herself. But what really makes her sympathetic is her tragic backstory. She witnessed her parents' murders at the hands of a vicious Yakuza boss and spent the rest of her life seeking vengeance. Unfortunately, Oren was one of the people who betrayed the bride at the beginning of Kill Bill, so her death was inevitable. But that doesn't mean that we can't wish she was still out there decapitating loudmouth subordinates. <laughs> Number 6. Magneto, X-Men. You homo sapiens and your guns. Talk about perfect casting. Ian McKellen is at the top of his game in this film, inhabiting the role of Magneto in a way few actors would have been capable of. X-Men was the first installment in what is now one of the most critically and commercially successful franchises ever. The film pitted Magneto against the X-Men, though one can be forgiven for hoping that the former would emerge victorious. There is no peace, not here, nor anywhere else. Having lost his parents to the horrors of the Holocaust, Magneto is easily one of the most sympathetic villains on our list. Armed with a badass cape and the ability to control metal, this is one baddie we'd like to have on our side. Charles always wanted to build bridges. 
Number five, Roy Batty, Blade Runner. Chu, if only you could see what I've seen with your eyes. Blade Runner is a visual delight, dripping in so much style that it practically seeps through the holes in the screen. The cherry on top of the film's proverbial cake is its supposed villain, Roy Batty. Now, where would we find this? Batty is an android close to death who's searching for a way to extend his lifespan. We consider Batty a bad guy because he's contrasted at every turn by the film's protagonist, played by Harrison Ford. However, all Batty wants is to live, which ultimately makes his death the film's most heartbreaking moment. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Number four, Darth Vader, Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. You underestimate the power of the dark side. As his final scene poignantly revealed, Darth Vader was, in the end, a man. After nearly three full films as the baddest guy in the galaxy, Darth Vader ultimately redeems himself when he tosses the Emperor down a reactor chute, saving Luke in the process. No! And let's be honest, after it was revealed to audiences that Darth Vader was Luke's dad, it became a little harder to root against him. So, when the final film in the original trilogy was released, it became clear that Vader was no longer the epitome of evil we thought he was. As he lies dying in Luke's arms, it's hard not to get just a little bit choked up. No. Go, my son. Number three, The Joker, The Dark Knight. Well, you look nervous. Is it the scars? As if you didn't know this was coming. Heath Ledger's iconic portrayal of the Joker in Christopher Nolan's seminal Batman film will live on forever as one of the greatest performances in cinematic history. Never start with the head, the victim gets all fuzzy. The Joker is the villain the world deserves. He's ruthless, cunning, full of awesome anecdotes, and wicked good with a pencil. Whereas Batman is the personification of good, refusing to break his moral code no matter what, the Joker is, as his name implies, a total wildcard. The Joker is a sociopath and a killer, but he's also a realist. And that makes him endlessly fun to watch, as you never know what he'll do next. Sometimes you just want to watch the world burn. Number 2. Loki, Marvel Cinematic Universe Your heroes are scattered. Your floating fortress falls from the sky. Where is my disadvantage? How can you not root for the god of lies and mischief? Or a guy who just wants to prove to his adopted dad that he's as worthy as his god of thunder of a brother. While it isn't exactly rare for a villain to overshadow a film's protagonist, it is rather impressive when they prove to be more alluring than Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor combined. You listen well, brother. I do. I'm listening. The Avengers is truly Loki's time to shine, and he doesn't disappoint using his skills as a master manipulator to wreak havoc on Earth. And he would have gotten away with it too, if it weren't for that gang of meddling superheroes. You'll get him next time, bud. Enough! You are all of you beneath me. I am a god, you dull creature. And I will not be bullied by- Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Don't try to stop me, Smee. I'm not a game. This is it. Don't try to stop me this time, Smee. Don't try to stop me this time, Smee. Don't you dare try to stop me this time, Smee. Try to stop me. I'll scare him real bad. The point is, folks, I'm gonna do anything to get your business. Hell, I'll possess myself if I gotta. Whoa! Yo, I got demons running all through me. All through me. Come on down here and see it. I don't believe you got it in you, Jake. I'm gonna go get it right now. Oh! Get it! Ah, you mother f The next one will kill you. Oh, son of a bitch. You shot me in the ass. Okay, wait, 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 okay, okay. Number one, Hans Gruber, Die Hard. <laughs> Benefits of a classical education. Played to perfection by Alan Rickman, Gruber is as suave as they come. From his tailor suit to his perfectly groomed facial hair, Gruber looks like he would be right at home running a Fortune 500 company. Instead, he's opted for a life of crime. And were it not for some annoying cop from New York, he'd be sitting on a beach somewhere counting his bonds. Minute 
each town will blow the roof, they'll spend a month sifting through the rubble, and by the time they figure out what went wrong, we'll be sitting on a beach earning 20%. What makes Gruber a truly iconic villain worthy of our affection is his cold, calculated demeanor in the face of adversity. You'd be hard-pressed to find a villain with more swag than Hans Gruber, and that's why we couldn't help but root for him. Get on the jet to Tokyo and ask the chairman. I'm telling you, you're just going to have to kill me. Okay. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.